all welcome to hack of the day episode 11 now in this video we are going to look at how to find publicly readable files on your amazon s3 account this hack of the day episode is proudly sponsored by security tube trainings uh, we have a ton of trainings on python scripting ios linux wi-fi metasploit gdb um, and others please have a look at securitytube-training.com for more information. Okay, so before I move on uh, to the actual meat of the video, let me first talk about what is Amazon S3 for people who do not know about it. So S3 really stands for Simple Storage Service and in a nutshell, this is actually storage in the cloud provided by Amazon. So pretty much all the scalability, reliability, uh, ensuring that this is probably there in different physical zones in the world and things like that is all guaranteed by Amazon. And all you have to do is upload your files on the Amazon S3 service, right? Very simple to use and probably that's why they call it simple storage. Now, what is the problem or what are the security concerns which worry us? Now the thing is, this is similar to probably what could happen uh, if you left your data unprotected on a web server, right? So on Amazon S3, data is stored in what is called buckets. And in layman's language, you can visualize buckets to really be folders. And buckets can actually have public read, right? This is similar to you probably uploading a lot of data into a uh, web servers directory which is publicly readable now as you can well imagine if the bucket is publicly readable then anyone on the internet could access its contents and looks like unfortunately many of these enterprises have left their buckets with public read as the ACL on them the only reason I can probably imagine is because Amazon S3 and many similar uh, cloud-based storage services are still quite new and sysadmins are getting a hang of it and where definitely they may end up making some trivial mistakes which could be costly to the enterprise from a data security perspective. Prior art and research. Uh, so my good friend Robin Wood or Diggy Ninja has done a lot of work on this uh, and he's written a tool called Bucket Finder and this allows you to find buckets on Amazon which probably have the public read enabled and based on that it can show you the list of files in it and things like that. So check out bucket underscore finder in the URL given. Uh, recently last month the Metasploit team really aggregated a lot of statistics on this topic, which is I think they aggressively tried to, uh, you know, guess different bucket names and try and find how many of them were publicly readable and things like that. And they published their, uh, you know, final research in their blog post. So the question arises, then why are we here? Now, Diggy Ninja's tool is pretty fantastic. Uh, to probably find details on buckets which have left their permissions on, right? Now, but as an end user of Amazon S3, if you were an enterprise admin, which leverages S3, what would you do, right? Because I use a lot of Amazon S3 for security tube and a bunch of other things. Now, this is where uh, basically what I would require is a quick way by which I can check permissions on my bucket and files and ensure that only those which actually have public read enabled by me explicitly, uh, you know, for whatever functionality I need are the ones which are publicly or globally readable, right? So in order to do this, I'm going to write a very simple program and uh, you know, this is going to be using a library called Boto, which provides programmatic access to Amazon Web Services. Not only for Amazon S3, but probably for almost all the web services Amazon provides like EC2 and other things. Uh, the best part of Boto is, you know, it's written in Python. So, you know, I love it by default. 
and it's exceptionally trivial to use and you can download Boto from GitHub or use easy install to download and install Boto as well. So let me go here and let's see uh, what we can do. Now what I've done is I have created an Amazon bucket called hack of the day and inside that basically I have a folder called secret and inside that I have a file uh, basically called blackhat.tar.gz which is supposed to be like the secret file in there right go back in here so what I've done is I've written two programs and by the way, both the programs are available for you to try out if you have an Amazon S3 account by using our hack of the day blog link below where the code has been posted, right? And also leave your comments on the blog if you'd like. Uh, so here is what I'm going to do. First, let's try and understand how the S3 ACLs work or the ACLs work, right? Now, I've written an extremely simple program using Boto. Uh, basically we go ahead and first we initiate an S3 connection and by the way the access key and the secret key are placeholders you would need to get your own access key and secret key if you're an Amazon S3 customer who would like to check his buckets uh, for these issues right and then we pretty much connect to the bucket uh, and after that what we're going to do in the first program is try and set an ACL and after that we will go ahead and look at the permissions which we've just set using the ACL in the previous statement. So let me give you an example of what I mean. I'm going to run understanding ACLs.py and I'm going to say hack of the day is the name of the bucket. Now Amazon buckets are globally unique which is if I use hack of the day as one of the bucket names uh, nobody else, no other customer on Amazon can use it. So let's do understanding ACLs, blah, 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 hack of the day. And now I'm going to basically uh, enforce an ACL on the hack of the day bucket. And I'm going to basically enforce the private ACL. Now there are other options. We are only going to look at private uh, and the public hyphen read one, which is of interest to us. So let me set the ACL to private and after it is set it to private what I've done is I'm again just fetching the permissions to see what kind of permissions I have right now and if you notice it says that full control for a user by the name of Vivek 101 which is really the bucket owner fantastic now if I go ahead and set a basically public read as the ACL what we would find is now there are really two permission sets uh, the first one is full control for Vivek 101 and the second one is read for none which is really an anonymous user right which is pretty much everybody else now Amazon also makes a distinction of another kind of user which is every other authenticated user who uses the Amazon web services uh, we won't get into that and what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the public read scenario which probably is the most common worrisome scenario now really what we want to do is check the bucket in question and see if any of the files in there have read on them enabled because if this is the case then either an anonymous user on the web uh, could access it or as a variation as I mentioned an authenticated user on S3 could access it both of it is actually equally bad. So in order to do this, I've written a very simple program called check S3. And check S3 basically uh, connects to a bucket and gets the list of all the keys in there. Think of keys as really, you know, uh, basically the way to store the files in there. It's a key value pair. And then for each of those keys, we look at the grants which are there and check if the permission evaluates to a read. If it does, we basically say print 
that this specific key is actually public, which is worrisome, right? Fantastic. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually set a uh, private on everything inside hack of the day. This would take a bit. I just hope my internet connection is working. Okay, just fine. And I'm going to go ahead and check S3 uh, for hack of the day bucket and see which one of these have a public read enabled. And if you notice, we've just set uh, the bucket itself as private, but it's still possible to access public keys inside of it, right? This is one of the things people forget is you would need to recursively set the bucket and its contents as private. So here is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm now going to go back here and set the ACL for Black Hat and just make it readable to the owner. I'm going to go back, check this once again. And if you notice, this time you basically do not get uh, anything in here, which is public, right? While the last time we actually got a ton of stuff. Right now, depending on the functionality, this may or may not be relevant to you. So as an example, I have a bucket called code.com securitytube.net uh, where pretty much everything is public because I just link the code which I've posted you know a while back on securitytube.net on here right so you basically have a ton of stuff uh, which really is public it doesn't really matter because it was supposed to be public right Okay, fantastic. So going back in here, as you can clearly see, this script is very, very useful. And I could go back in here, set this to public, let's say, to make it shareable to everyone. And this would tell me that there is actually a public read on it. Okay. Uh, so that is pretty much all I have in mind for this video. The training of interest, if you'd like to learn about Python and how to systematically use it for pen testing and security research, then do have a look at the Security Tube Python Scripting Expert course and certification. As of this moment, we have students from over 73 countries taking this course. Also have a look at our new blog, the hack of the day blog, where I am starting to, you know, kind of become a blogger as well now, apart from a video blogger, which I was for the last six years. Uh, and please let me know your feedback. That's all guys. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye. Enjoy.